Hello, my name is Nicole Carson Boney and I'm a portrait photographer. I've been a Canon user since my beginning and I proudly own the Mark III, the Mark IV, and the Canon EOS R. I was super excited to hear about the new Canon EOS R5, so I decided to rent it for the weekend along with the new RF 24-105 f4 lens so I could take them for a test drive and be able to compare portraits taken with the R5 camera to those taken with my Mark IV and my EOS R. I love doing experiments and analyzing data, so I'm gonna take you along as I geek out over some comparisons between the Mark IV, the EOS R, and the Canon R5. And I'll use my three favorite lenses, which are the EF 24-105 f4, the EF 24-70 2.8, and the 50 1.2. I include detailed zooms of the portraits so you can decide for yourself how they stack up. I styled my model Heidi in a warm, casual outfit and seated her on an old steamer trunk in my studio. She would need to be in the same position for the many comparison photos, so I wanted to make sure she was comfortable. The first feature to consider is print size. Here are two portraits showing the size relationship of the 30 megapixels of the Mark IV and EOS R and the 45 megapixels of the R5. Without any enhancement software, 30 megapixels produces a photo that can be printed at roughly 14 by 18 inches at 300 dpi. The 45 megapixels of the EOS R5 produces a photo that can be printed at roughly 18 to 23 inches at 300 dpi. Next up is a comparison of my three favorite lenses, the EF 24-105 f4, the EF 24-70 2.8, and the EF 50mm 1.2. I started with my Canon Mark IV. All three portraits were photographed at f4 and a focal length of 50mm for consistency. All three photos look very similar in the three-quarter body crop. When I zoom in, the differences become more noticeable. The photo taken with the 24-105 is definitely the softest of the three. The photos taken with the 24-70 and the 50 are almost identical. The 50mm photo barely edges out the 24-70 in the detail, most noticeable in the eyelashes. Next I used my Canon EOS R. I bought this camera to replace my Mark III and to have as a second camera when shooting video with my Mark IV. But after using the EOS R for a few portrait photo shoots, I actually preferred it over my Mark IV, and I'll share more on that later. Similar to the Mark IV, the three portraits look very similar in the three-quarter body crop. When I zoom in, the photo taken with the 24-105 is definitely the softest of the three, and the photos taken with the 24-70 and the 50 are pretty much identical. I'm going to call it a tie between these two lenses. I was really curious to see how my EF lenses, combined with the adapter ring, would perform on the new EOS R5. Would the advanced system and 15 more megapixels make a noticeable difference? Similar to the Mark IV and EOS R, the three portraits look very similar in the three-quarter body crop. When I zoom in, the photo taken with the 24-105 is definitely the softest of the three, and the photos taken with the 24-70 and the 50 are almost identical. The 50mm photo again barely edges out the 24-70 in sharpness. So how would photos taken with the same lens on all three camera bodies compare with each other? That was my next test. The 24-105 f4 IS lens came with my Mark III camera when I purchased it new about six years ago. This lens has been my go-to lens for shooting video because it has built-in image stabilization. In the headshots, the detail seems pretty even between all three photos, but the photo taken with the Mark IV has the least amount of dimension. This becomes more evident when seen closer up. The amount of detail appears to be very similar in all three, and in the super close-up comparison, all three photos appear to have the same amount of sharpness visible in the eyelashes. So to really geek out, I made this grid of photos taken with all three cameras on all three lenses to compare the results. It's very clear the photos taken with the 24-105 are the softest. The sharpness seems evenly matched between the 24-70 and the 50mm. The photos taken with the EOS R series camera bodies definitely have more dimension than the photos taken with the Mark IV. Between the EOS R and the R5, the photos taken with the R5 have more detail noticeable in the skin texture. There's just more information captured to create the color of the skin. Next, I wanted to compare the EOS R and the R5 specifically. For these two portraits, I zoomed all the way out to 24mm and used the EF 24-70 2.8 lens. At this crop, the only noticeable difference is the R5 shoots a little warmer 
even though both cameras were set to neutral color and daylight white balance. I zoomed in proportionally to each other to compare the size of the EOS R's 30 megapixels compared to the R5's 45 megapixels. The sharpness appears very similar to me. Then I zoomed in to both of their faces to see how much detail was still visible. This is very important when I shoot full body portraits such as dancers. I wanted to see how much detail would be in their eyes and faces for me to edit and enhance. The R5 definitely has more noticeable detail at this zoom. My last comparison was between the EF 24-105 and the RF 24-105 lenses on the R5. I wanted to see if an upgrade to the RF lens would make a noticeable difference. In the headshot, the sharpness appears to be very similar, but the RF lens has more depth of color. In the close-up, the RF lens is noticeably sharper in addition to having more depth of color. In my opinion, from a practical standpoint, if you already own the EF version of this lens and you plan to upgrade to an EOS R series camera, then spending an extra $1,000 for the RF version of the lens may not be worth it, unless you're going to print sizable enlargements where the detail could be appreciated. But if you are new to the EOS R series, then the RF version will be awesome for you. I prefer shooting with my EOS R over my Mark IV for the following reasons. The first two reasons go hand in hand, namely the auto eye focus and tilt out LCD screen. I love using the tilting screen and shooting in live mode. I can easily lower or raise the camera to get the angle I want without having to kneel down, sit in a chair, or climb on a stool. This really reduces eye fatigue from not having to look through the viewfinder during a long photo shoot. With the auto eye focus, I can take my shots with confidence even though I'm not manually placing my focus on my subject's eyes. My third reason is the lighter weight of the camera body. It makes a difference on my back and arms after a long photo shoot. And fourth, I appreciate the increase in sharpness and depth of color that EOS R captures. The EOS R5 provides all the same benefits of the EOS R plus 15 more megapixels. For me, the extra megapixels of information make a difference on wider, full body shots, particularly with dancers. I also love the quickness of the shutter. It's definitely quicker than the EOS R, which is valuable again with dancers requiring action shots. I shoot a lot of video and the R5 has some really cool video upgrades over the EOS R that require a separate video review. The R5 also has some advanced features over the EOS R for sports photography that I don't necessarily utilize in my studio portrait. If you currently own a Mark III or Mark IV and you haven't upgraded to mirrorless yet, then I think the R5 is a fantastic choice. If you're an event photographer, such as weddings, and you really don't need all those megapixels, then I think the R6 would be your best fit. If you currently own the EOS R and you don't print larger than about a 16 by 20, then the nearly $4,000 price tag of the R5 may not be worth the upgrade. But if you do large prints and you require a lot of detail for creative editing like I do, then the R5 is the best choice. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this information was helpful to you. And if you like this video, please don't leave without clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. Then I can keep making videos like this one and take you behind the scenes to my creative photo shoots.